have an employment manual, you want to incorporate that in there. We talk about employment manuals somehow too. Um, so you've got your written employment agreement that all staff members are going to sign. And you say, should I have a written employment agreement? Did you guys have a written employment agreement? I mean, a policy manual, correct? Right? And, and where's your features? Yes. Okay, Penn put that together. We did that a number of years ago, correct? Right? Okay, because I don't think I don't think you do that anymore. Um, and so then the question is, when you look through it, do all of the provisions of that agreement apply to you? Um, because a lot of times the written employment agreements that you, the policy manuals that you get, that others have created for you, um, have far more provisions in it than really apply to practice. So I take the philosophy that you should have as little in that policy manual as possible. So you say, okay, what are the things that are most important to your practice? Number one, vacation policy. Number two, sick policy. Um, uh, you know, um, accrued benefits. Um, potentially a dress code. Um, so you say, what are the things that really matter to you in your practice or the issues that come up? Those are the things that you want to have in that policy manual. And if you're using one that's a commercial one, you really want to get rid of things that, that just don't apply to you or procedures that don't apply to you. For instance, um, you shouldn't promise any of your employees that they're going to be reviewed on an annual basis. You don't have to make that promise. Your employees should know that you will review them whenever they do something good or bad on the spot. Your interaction with the patient today was really good. What you, you know, talked to me about the different kinds of lenses that, that, that they could purchase, and, and they did. It's great. Um, or, you know, I've been seeing you now for the last couple of months. You've been fantastic with patients, and production numbers are great. I'm going to give you a raise. So you break away from that annual expectation of people getting paid, you know, having an increase. And you can do that. You don't have to promise them that you're going to be giving them an annual review. It's going to be an on-the-spot kind of thing, and raises will occur when compensation adjustments are heard. So you, it's sort of like, wow, that's so much different than what everybody's been training for. Um, but it really works far better, because you guys don't have HR departments. You're as close as the HR department, but you're, you're in a much bigger practice. You've got a lot of folks to deal with. But once again, you want to have the ability to be as, as free as possible to do what you want to do without having, for instance, an employment manual says, before you can terminate someone, you have to give them a written warning. Then you have to send them home without pay for the day. And then you can terminate them. Well, what if somebody does something really bad and you just want to fire them on the spot? He says, no, you've got to do money first, you know. It's kind of like, well, this is nuts. So a lot of the HR-backed policy manuals out there come from bigger companies that have HR departments. You guys don't have HR departments. You want to keep, you don't want anybody putting any handcuffs on you so that, that you're tied to those policies. And everything that's in that policy manual is a term of the contract with your employee. Because if you expect to enforce it, um, then they can enforce it back at 